Morning, everybody. Nice brisk morning today. Uh, today I've got a, a message to you, probably the most powerful message I've ever delivered. And uh, uh, most people hate it. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to deliver it anyway because it's not all about just sweet things in the scriptures. It's about the whole thing. Uh, David and Audrey are not here because uh, she's not feeling well. But I was going to use David as an example, and I still am. You know, David was a store manager for Publix. And uh, those guys are in overdrive if they're doing their job. What do you think it would be like if he on Monday morning told all of his department heads what he expects them to do, and then went back into his office and played games on his phone. How do you think that the hierarchy of Publix would react to that? Not well. Because they expect him to uh, operate at his full potential in that position. What about, uh, and you may have heard this, it's, it's, it's really a good example of a, a high school track team going to the coach and say, coach, can we smoke, drink, and run? And the coach said, sure, you just can't smoke, drink, and win, you know? So they're not putting forth the full effort that is required of them in their job. How about if uh, a NASCAR driver were to drive around the Daytona 500 half throttle? He'd go around the track, but he wouldn't win. And how do you think those that uh, hire him to win are going to think about that? You know? This is the same in our lives as servants of God. What is our example to them, to the people? That are, Do you think that God would be happy if others act like you? You know what I mean? I mean, examine your faithfulness to Scripture. Are we punctual? Would we be happy if everybody came to church the same time we did? Think about these things. The world is watching us. Do we take the scriptures seriously? We need to. Because if we don't, they won't. And so half measure avails nothing. Doesn't get anything done. We need to be obedient to the scriptures. I mean, the whole thing. You know, God didn't, uh, didn't write this thing for us to ignore, right? I mean, it's, he wrote it to us to obey. And so, oh boy, where are my glasses? Anyway, uh, whenever you choose to not follow the scriptures, what you're actually doing is you're putting yourself above God. Pride, right? Pride. And so God hates pride. So today I hope to be able to share with you uh, the things that God wants you to not just know, but do. So you could... What good is it to know the whole Bible but not do it, right? So, and most people, if you, if you explain this to them, say, well, I'm not prideful. <laughs> really? In Ezekiel chapter 28, 1 to 7, I can't believe I don't have my, 
Wait a minute, I got my glasses. They're just flat. There we go. Ezekiel. Uh oh. Michael, you want to come fix me? My, my glasses. What's oh, over here? Okay, I think I'm all right. I'm all right. Wrong side came up. Okay, in Ezekiel chapter 28, 1 to 7. I hope by the time I get through this, you guys are going to understand the reason I put this thing together like this. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In the pride of your heart, you say, I am a God. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, if you choose to ignore the scriptures, what you're doing is you're placing yourself above God. Then you're a little G God. Because what you're saying is the God of the universe isn't qualified uh, to, to share with you what you need to be doing, okay? So it says, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. But you are a man and not a God. Though you think you are as wise as a God. Man! Are you wiser than Daniel? Is no secret hidden from you? By your wisdom... And understanding you have gained wealth for yourself and amassed gold and silver in your treasures. But your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth by your great skill in trading. And because of your wealth, your heart has grown proud, self-sufficient. He is doing it his way instead of God's way. Therefore, so because of that, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you think you are wise, as wise as a God, I am going to bring foreigners against you, the most ruthless of nations. They will draw their swords against your beauty and wisdom and pierce your shining splendor. Pride is putting your agenda ahead of God's agenda. And there's many things in scripture, guys. You know, it's always uh, amazed me that scripture says, do not put the Lord thy God to the test. But God says, as far as your tithes and offerings, test him. And see if he will not open the floodgates of heaven. And yet people will think that they don't need to tithe when God said tithe. I don't get it. I don't understand how we can put our will ahead of God's will. God says, test me. Why? Why does he say test me? Test me because our money uh, is a, a little G God in our lives. We want to hoard it and keep it. We don't want to support uh, the church. God said, bring it into the storehouse right here. Some people will say, well, I support TBN and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's not what God said. God said, bring it into the storehouse. And yet people want to put their own will ahead of God's will. I just don't understand it. And it's just pride, self-centeredness. The next one is uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 24 and 25. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. He prayed to the Lord who answered him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah's heart was proud and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. I want to tell you guys, there's a price to pay for putting your agenda ahead of God's agenda. There's a price to pay for that. And yet we, we still ignore what God says do. As if we have the authority to say no to him. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. The, the consequences in our life are... Uh, are, are directly related to our obedience to God. 
I just, I, I just, it's, my heart has been heavy because there's so many people who say that they're Christians but ignore God in their lives. This is serious business, guys. Serious business. Are we really followers of Christ? Would Jesus not go to the cross because he had a headache? You know? So what is it in our lives that, that would cause us to not do what God wants us to do? I, don't, I, I just don't get it. I tell you, there's been a, a lot of times where I sure didn't feel like coming in here. But it ain't about feelings. And it's not about me. It's about me being obedient to the scriptures. Forsake not the gathering together of the saints. Go to church. It's as simple as that. Go to church. A lot of people that, that, that uh, most of them don't go, don't go to church because they don't want to give any money. God has money and it has nothing to do with it. You know, I mean, they figure if they don't go to church, they don't have to tithe or, or, or give offerings. Well, the church bills still go on. Insurance still goes on. Everything goes on. So what can we do about pride? Go back to 2 Chronicles 32, 25 and 26. See, the 26 is the key. But Hezekiah's heart was proud and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented. It's huge. Being sorry for our sin doesn't get it. Repentance, turning from it, going the opposite direction. Repentant of the pride of his heart, as did the people of Jerusalem because of his leadership, right? How are people responding to your leadership out there? As the people of Jerusalem, therefore, the Lord's wrath did not come upon them during the days of Hezekiah. Repent means feeling sorrow for your sin and turning the other way. That's what repentance is all about. You know, the Bible says, without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sin. That's heavy duty right there. That's like living in an ongoing lifestyle of... Uh, Rebellion against God, you know, some there's a lot of people that I know I don't know a lot, but I know some who think that because uh, Of grace they can live any way they want Guys, that's not true. That's just not true So repent of pride in Philippians 2 3 Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Do nothing. Do, do these words just blow across our, our minds? Are we, are we just, we're just reading words, or do we actually listen to what God is saying to us through the scripture? He wrote the scriptures for us. So everything that's in here, we need to, to sink into ourselves. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. If it's all about me, come on. I want to tell you guys that if you're saved, your life belongs to God. Your life. Everything about your life belongs to Him. You know, I've always been amazed that God would uh, allow us to use the 90% that we have authority over to use that wisely. You know, 10% already belong. the whole thing belongs to Him. But 10% is what we give right off the top to him. And, and yet 90% of our income, God lets us choose how we're going to bless people. Naturally, we have pay our rent and stuff, but how are we going to bless other folks with that? Because remember, it's all his. We are his, right? Right? 
I just love this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Now look at them through God's eyes. And God is telling us to look at them as better than ourselves. That's because it motivates us to treat them differently. We can't just put them down if we're obeying the Bible. You know, we got to love them. So our example of being humble is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Can you imagine what, ha what God had to do to redeem us? God had to come to earth as a child and live his life here on earth and sacrifice it for us. What could have prevented him from going to the cross? I just can't imagine him saying, you know, I don't feel good today. I think I'm going to put this off. If he is our example, if Jesus is our example of life, what do we do when we don't feel like it? Do we press forward knowing that others are watching us? Do we press on to the prize? Do we really live for God when it's not comfortable? Because I'm telling you, man, you're going to get attacked if you are full bore for Jesus. You're going to get attacked. Just prepare for it. No greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater. Isn't that great news? Yeah. And so what is his example to us? Like I said, what would have prevented him from going to the cross? A headache? Come on, man. Life is not co about comfort. There's, there's no comfort in sacrificing ourselves for others. But he just said, consider others better than yourself. There's a reason God put that in the Bible, because we're naturally self-centered. From birth, we're self-centered. It's all about me. Guys, that can't be true for a Christian. Can't be true. God gives us what we have to share with others. We are a conduit, a funnel yeah. of God's blessing to us and out to others. Yeah. And I want to keep my funnel as, as empty as I can so God keeps pouring into it. You know, what a great thing that is. That God would give us talents to use for the kingdom. What's your talent? I mean, you know, God has given me a few things. I love working on cars and stuff, so I'm able to help people. You know, me and Michael built that flatbed trailer so I go get their cars. And bring. It's about that. It's all about considering others better than ourselves. Are we really disciples? You know, there's a reason in the Great Commission that God said to go and make disciples. He didn't say go and make Christians, although that you have to do that. But the end goal is to make a follower of Christ by our example. Guys, the world is looking at us to see if this Jesus thing is really real. Because they hear so much of it on TV, and it's all about passing the plate. It's all about what, what is he all really about? What is Jesus about? He is a, he's about his people representing him as ambassadors. In other words, we do his will. Are we? Can we do better? Can we get more out of ourselves and more into him every day? Not just Sunday morning. A disciple of Christ is 24-7, 365. Every day. And it's going to be hard. But being hard didn't stop our Savior from going to the cross for us. So let, let's follow his example here. I got in Ephesians chapter 4, 
verses 2 and 3. Be completely humble and gentle. Now, what is left out of the word completely? Nothing. Nothing. With everything you are, completely humble and gentle. Be patient. I don't, I don't like to say that. I say be content. Patient comes through trials. Content comes through release. Right? Bearing. Now, this is a great word here. Bearing with one another in love. Bearing means it ain't going to be easy. Grin and bear it. You ever heard that? Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort. What's left out? God said, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. You can't be stirring the pot and being obedient to the Word of God. You can't do that. Because what you're doing then is you're putting yourself above what He says for you. You're making yourself a little G God. And that's not what He wants. God doesn't want any competition in His authority. God says it, that's it. God said it, that's it. And I know I've said this before, but you've, you've seen the bumper sticker. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. You can take the middle part out. God said it, that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, that settles it. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Every effort. All you can do with everything you're, that, that you're about. 1 Peter 5, 6. I'm, I'm just loading you guys down with Scripture and I want you to take this bullet to home like you ought to do every week and go through it again. Get it into your mind. This is what God is saying to every person. Humble yourselves, therefore. Isn't it great that this whole thing has been about getting out of yourself and into Him? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Right? That means surrendering to him, that he may lift you up in due time. This is exciting to me, guys, because God is going to raise us up one day. One day. Isn't it going to be great? We, we keep pressing forward to the prize. What's the prize? Heaven. Heaven. Now, I don't understand what it means to store up for yourselves riches in heaven. What does that mean when we get there? I don't know. But I do know that God put that there because we are gatherers instinctly. We want, we, we want to get stuff. So God is saying, do it for him. Gather riches in heaven. In other words, the way you live today is gathering for yourselves in riches. Every time we do a good deed, it's like ka in our heavenly account, right? Let's live our lives honorably before the Lord Jesus. Come on, man. Think about what he did for you and how you were on his mind when he, when he was bleeding out. Are we willing to bleed out for God, guys? Come on. And so we're going to close with Micah 6, 8. He has showed you, O oh man... They didn't say old man, so it wasn't talking directly to me. It's talking to all y'all. He has showed you, old man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? That's a huge word, require. To act justly. And to love mercy. And show that with how you react to people out there. You know, people respond differently when, when you're loving them. You know, yesterday me and Michael went to uh, Macon to get a car. And there was a uh, the guy, it was a black guy that owned it. And when we got there, I loved this guy. He didn't know how to react. He didn't know how to react. Because I was just all over him, you know, loving on him. And we were simply there to pick up his car. But we used that opportunity to share God's will with him. It was a great experience. 
We've been texting after the fact, you know, back and forth. I mean, I've got a new friend, even in Macon. He's not used to people pouring themselves out to him. He's not used to that. It was a foreign concept to him, especially from some old white man. You know, what a great thing that was to put something into his life that wasn't there before. And by the time we were done, man, he was just, he was just loving talking to me. And I was loving it too. Yeah. To act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with your God. That means if you're, if you're doing this together, it's not your will that's overriding his will. Because if we walk humbly with our God, guys, we're not negating his power. We're not putting our own agenda ahead of his. Because that's what we do. That's what we do when, when we say no to the scriptures. We put our own agenda ahead of his. So how you doing? How you doing? You know, well, is, is God looking at you? Is Jesus looking at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Are we, are we doing, the, are we living out the scriptures? With this world looking at us, are we, are we pleasing to God in our behavior? You know, I, I, I love you guys. You know, and I'm, I'm so pleased that God has put you in my life. But how are we doing? How are we doing? God, guys, there's a lot of people that are going to cast slander against you for living for God. And a lot of it's going to come from people that say that they're Christians. You know, it was the religious people that killed Jesus. How much more should we expect them to turn on us? Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. They, many people have their own agenda, but that's not that's in opposition to the Word of God. If we just live our lives in such a way that we feel that Jesus would be pleased with us, what else matters? What else matters? Nothing. Nothing. Our whole life is about pouring out ourselves to other people. And God's going to say, yeah, that's my boy down there. That's my girl down there. Yeah. Doing what I asked him to do. Amen. So what, what, what are we going to do differently? Because we've all got room to grow. You know. Are we going to pour out ourselves to other people? And there's, most people will even reject it because they don't understand it. They rejected Jesus. Look, you know, it's so neat that, they, that, that God put in the Bible all these things for us to learn from. Paul went to prison because of the gospel. Blessed are those that are persecuted for my namesake. And he wrote the New Testament also from sitting in a jail cell. And not just a jail cell, in the inner jail. And, and these weren't pristine like they are now. There's blood everywhere. Rats. And they're singing praises to God. <laughs> In the middle of all this, what are we doing while we're persecuted? What are we doing? Saying, why, Lord, is he letting this stuff happen to me? <laughs> Guys, that's pride. Why not let it happen to me? And so when others see us going through trials and coming out victorious on the other side, that's a meaningful statement to this world that bad things are going to happen. Get over it. Press forward to the prize that awaits us. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your word, Lord. God, thank you for writing down your instructions to us for life. Father, cause us to be obedient uh, to the scriptures, Lord, and not just the easy part, but the hard part. And Father, I pray that those that are listening out there on the internet, Father, that, that this message would have an impact on their lives, Lord. That they would, they would understand that you have written everything we need to know in your word. And Father, we can't pick and choose because you wrote it all for us. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, I pray for those that are 
sick today and uh, chose not to be here. Lord, I, I pray, pray that your blessings on them, Father. Uh, and Lord, uh, thank you for bringing those that you brought here today, Lord, uh, that they would hear uh, a word from you today, Lord. May it pierce their hearts, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.